Y'all are right, because y'all say, not by my might. No, no, you, you, you need to write this and understand this. Not by might or power. See, the problem with some of us is your, the reason why you can't get no victory in your life is because you keep trying to be the one running. You keep making decisions. And you keep moving and operating according to what feels good for you and what looks good for you. Is that, is that anybody? That find yourself, you keep operating and moving what feels good to you and, 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 and you, get, you allow yourself to be set up. Amen? But I want God wants you to know tonight is not by your might or your power. In other words, your walk with life is not based on your might and your power. Because watch this, there's some things in life that can come at you that you might not be able to handle. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's some things in life that may you may find yourself in and you don't have the power to deliver yourself. I don't care how smart you might think you might be. There's some things that you can be a genius and there's some things in life that can come at you and you can have an IQ, the highest IQ in the world and you will not have the power to overcome that thing that come at you. I don't care how much money you have. You can have all the wealth in the world and yet there's some things that your, your money don't have the power to purchase you out of. There are people who have money who are losing their mind. They feel like they're losing their mind. So God said something in the word that's very powerful. He says that it won't be by you. You want, you want victory in life? It won't be by your might or by your power. But he said, but by my spirit. He says, watch, what is he saying? He's saying the spirit of God, who God is, has the power to deal with any situation or circumstances that you may run across. See, the problem, let me tell you what happens in the world. People in the world, they, we, when we were in the world, we became, we felt, anybody ever found themselves in a situation where you felt hopeless? You know what's interesting about hopelessness? Hopelessness derives from a situation where you feel like you don't have the power to change it. Hopelessness comes from a situation where you feel like you don't have the might to deal with it. But see, those who are the children of God understand what I can't deal with, my God can. Amen? Amen? And that's why, let me tell you, and that's why in the world today, can, can God talk, God gonna talk to us today. In the world today, that's why it's full of people. We, 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 we turn to drugs, we turn to alcohol, we turn to men. We try to escape the things we didn't have the might or power to deal with. Come on now, you know how it is. When you don't feel like you can deal with it, you don't feel like you can overcome it, you start, the Satan starts offering you things to escape. I didn't say to conquer, but to escape. Is there anybody, anybody in here found yourself trying to escape from some things you should have been trying to conquer? Yes, and I, I'm gonna tell you, I've been there, I've been there also. You find yourself, and you know what's interesting? You are trying to find yourself to escape from some things that your flesh say me. Oh, y'all don't want to, we're going to talk tonight. Say, it was, say me. There's some things that my flesh desire. There's some things that me, that, that, that was in me that Satan, because how many know what the Bible says? A man is carried away by his own desires. In other words, I'm carried away from the presence of God by the things that I desire in my flesh. There are some things that I desire, but did not have the power or the might to sustain Oh, anybody want to, come on, you know how it is when we're in the world. You desire some things, but, and you know what, and you allow, and, and God was telling you, you're not ready for that. You're not ready to be married. You're not ready for that finances. You're not ready for this. And you began to say, God, can get you. I'm going to go get this. I'm going to make this happen. And you know what we began to say? Let me tell you what people began to say, because this is, this is a move today. This is a move today. 
uh, find your purpose. And you, we began to say people are now seeking to find their purpose. And they, but when they, and when they begin, oh, I'm gonna tell you, God, and, and you, you have people in the church, and they are finding their purpose, and you can see them, they, and they think their purpose was if I accomplished this, if I got this degree, I, I got my purpose. If I get this job, I got my purpose. If I get this, if I get this man, I found my purpose. If I, and I'm gonna tell you right now, oh, that's that's the move. That, that is the movement today. Go after, find your desire, find, seek after that thing which is your purpose. But let me tell you something. If God is not the one leading you to his purpose, you don't have the might or the power to sustain your purpose. Oh, y'all, that's what I just said. In other words, if God is not in the midst of it, you're not going to have the strength. You're not going to have the might or the power to sustain the thing that you're trying to find that you think that's your purpose. And I've seen people in relationships get in relationships, and and I want this. I want my. I, I think my purpose is to be married. I want to be. A, I want to be a wife. I want to be a family. I've seen people. Oh, they, they. It's in their mind. It's in their mind more than God. I want a family. I want a family. I want. A, and they have gone to the extremes to, to create a family. They thought their purpose was to get married, have children, and and, and, and run and have a family. And that's not a bad idea. That's a good thing. But you know what? But they went out to fulfill their purpose. But when they got somebody, come on, say, when they got somebody, when they went after someone, because they didn't let the Spirit lead them, say that, because God's going to take us somewhere, and they did not allow the Spirit of God to lead them, they allowed their purpose to lead them, they allowed their desires to, in other words, they allowed their own nature to lead them, then when they did, and watch this, they were able to obtain what they said they wanted, but they found out during the time of, they found out during the time of obtaining, they did not have the might or the, or the power to sustain it. Am I talking to somebody today? Is God talking to one of us today? Is he talking to us today? It, it's an it's a interesting thing to be able to get what you want but don't, and find out you don't have the might or the power to sustain it. And you find yourself weeping and crying on the side of the pillowcase. You find yourself aggravated and frustrated. And then many people, they find themselves escaping. Escaping from the bed. Oh, this is something. Oh my God, I see it in the spirit. It's amazing to find yourself trying to escape from the purpose you designed for yourself. You're trying, you wanted it and you got it and now you spend the rest of the time trying to escape from the, you want, you wanted success, so you got success and now you spend all your time at work drinking and taking pills or, or doing, trying to escape from the thing that you thought was going to give you purpose and identity. You get married, but now you spend your whole time, what, trying to not go to the house. You don't want to go to the house. You don't want to see your husband. You don't want to see the person. You want to escape from the very thing you thought was going to give you your identity and purpose. Because you didn't understand that you didn't have the might or power to sustain it. We got people who like running. Some people running, they don't even know they're running. They don't even know they're running. And they're running from the very one. And you know what's so interesting about God? The Father, the Father saying, I don't, he said, I'm not mad at you. See, Satan, I'm not upset with you. But God has to pull you into a wilderness experience. Say so yes. He has to pull. Why does he have to pull you into a wilderness experience? Because he has to begin to give you some spirit. He has to begin to teach you it's not by your might or power. I'm still amazed. Is there anyone amazed at people who say they are Christians but yet still try to find their might and power in other things? Still try to find their identity and purpose in other things? I was telling somebody this today. I said, you know, when I was I was talking to him, I was talking to him about purpose, and I said, you know what's interesting about purpose is that when you that we 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 spend in oh man, it's going on in the church. We're spending our time trying to find our purpose without understanding God's purpose. And what many people fail to understand is that you can obtain. What you think is your purpose. Yes, you can. You can obtain because what you think is your purpose can usually be accomplished by the things within you. By your gifts, your talents, your education, your knowledge, your wisdom, your purpose. See, the difference between your purpose and God's purpose is <laughs> your purpose, you can do it. God's purpose, you got to submit to Him. But see, the, only, the, the, the interesting thing about 
your purpose once you get it. Now, I'm, I know I'm going to have some hands. How many of us got it? How many of us got to the place where you thought you were in that place of purpose? Oh, man, come on, come on, come on. But then you found out that you didn't have the might or power to sustain it. Are we going to have anybody be honest in church today? People are losing families because they didn't have the might to sustain it. The abortion clinic is running over because people didn't have the might or power to sustain it. People are on the pressures, that there's depression and oppression because people didn't have the might. It's amazing to want something and don't have the might and power to sustain the thing you think you want. But God began to deal with us, and you know God took me and said, I want to talk about the kingdom. He said, I'm still talking about my kingdom leaders. Because kingdom leaders, and we found out that the kingdom leaders must have the spirit, but then we found out the kingdom leaders also must be led by the spirit. So I want to talk because he said it's not by my might. See, God is saying, I'm going to tell you some kingdom leaders understand this. Kingdom leaders understand this. They understand that anything that God is calling them for, they will never be able to accomplish it without him. I see, you all may think I'm talking about the, the assignments. You may think I'm talking about assignment. I'm talking about in life itself. Kingdom leaders understand that they were delivered. Amen. And kingdom leaders also understand that there was no good thing in them. Amen. You know what's amazing when you realize there's no good thing in when you realize there's no, no, no good thing in you, you will stop trying to give yourself to other people. And let God finish you. What am I saying? How you gonna help somebody else accomplish something and you ain't got the mighty power to accomplish it yourself? It's y'all know that we 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 are we're society that's good in motivating people, but not sustaining ourselves. Even the motivator can't sustain himself. I gave good advice. I just wonder why I can't take it for myself. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I told him, because you know, I told my girlfriend, I told her, you know what, leave him and, and, and do this. And I gave her good advice, but when I'm in a situation, I just can't, I, I can't hear myself. Because I was like, not by my mind, not by my power, but spirit. That scripture is so powerful if you get the revelation. He's giving you a key. He's giving me a key. Or oh, it's not by your might or power. So stop crying. Some of us stop crying. Some of us stop worrying. Just turn to the one who's able. See, when I really see wise people, when they realize it's not that it's not by their might or power, then you turn to the one who has the power. And you know when you turn to them, watch this. Wise people, when they turn to them, they do what we say. They bow down. They bow down and humble themselves before the one who actually has the power. Because how many of y'all know it's a level of pride to think that you can do life without the one who created life? Y'all know, men know what I'm talking about. When we Man, we get something, we don't like to read the directions. Well, and this is what we this is what we actually saying. Well, the guy who did it, he, he don't, I know what he know. I, I, I know just as much as he know. And then when the wife comes in and say, wow, these extra screws, you be like, well, you know, the extra screws, they, he just put them in there. He just, we really didn't mean it. You know what I'm saying? But humble men begin to understand it's not by my might or power. I want to tell you something. There's a lot of people are, that are trying to step up on Facebook, on Twitter, in their own ministry. They're trying to go out and, I'm going to tell you something. They're going to find out, I'm going to tell you, you ain't got to say nothing to people. I, find out, I don't have to tell people that God didn't call over that. I don't have to fuss with you. You know why? Because they're going to find out real quick that they don't have the right or power to carry. They did it. And then we, you, how you know they did it? They tried to create their ministry. Why? Because they don't have the power, the might or the power to sustain what they're trying to walk. Because see, when you start doing stuff because you think, I want to be known, I want somebody to see me, I want to feel special, those are not the qualifying tools to accomplish God's goal. You need him. 
And those who meet him will say, Lord, no longer I live. Too many people trying to work for God and still live. They want to work for God and still be and still do them. I'm going to work for God, but I'm going to take all the credit. It don't work like that. Because the truth is, any good thing I ever did, it was because of him. Because we owe him, I serve him. And when I served him, it was all about what I wanted when I wanted. And guess what? When I ran into situations just like you, that I could not, when I, when I didn't have the might or power to deal with it, I threw it away just like you did. Some of us threw away our parents. Some people threw away people you love. Why? Because you didn't have the might or power to bring them through. Some of us threw away jobs. Some of us throw some of us threw away our own life because you didn't have the might of power to sustain you. You were gifted and talented. You were gifted and talented, but it took more than just being gifted and talented. Yeah, yeah. You needed somebody who was going to give you the power. You needed the spirit. So that's the spirit. Yeah. But then, but let's look how this let's look how this thing look because we got to break it down. And I'm I'm gonna start today and maybe probably finish it. I'm gonna start today and probably finish on Tuesday because we have to understand. God wants us to go deeper in what it means to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. What does it mean to be led by the Spirit? Because some people think being led by the Spirit, we don't turn, God, how many of you know, the church don't turn being led by the Spirit to some real freaky stuff. Amen. They think being led by the Spirit is trembling on you trembling, you fall off the Oh, look at the Spirit of God. Hey, come on. You look like you need a shot. You look like something wrong with you. Because watch this. When you do all that shaking and all that situation, don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong, the Holy Ghost can come over your boy, you come over and mind yourself on that flow, and, and sometimes you're being delivered. But watch this. But when you walk out that door, you're going to have to be, you're going to have to have an impartation of the Spirit, and that's going to mean you're going to have to be alert, you're going to have to be alert and understand what God is saying. Amen? Y'all with me? So let's turn our Bibles to Romans 8. to go to the New Living Translation. Okay. Said not by my might, not by my power, but Lord by your spirit. You know what I love, you know what I love, you know what I love about the subtitle in Romans 8 it says living in the spirit. Not by my might. Not by my power, but living in the spirit. Somebody say, living in the spirit. Living. Look at somebody say, are you living in the spirit? You can tell people who are not living in the spirit. Because they got a weight on them that's so heavy. People who are not living in the spirit, they have a weight on their shoulders. Because they're carrying life. They're trying to carry life on their shoulders. But watch what God says. He said, lay all your cares before me for I care for you. God says, I'm not here. I brought you here today to free you from the things you've been carrying in your life. People, you got people, they've been carrying guilt. They've been carrying rejection. They've been carrying life. They've been carrying what their father did to them. They've been carrying what their mother said to them. They've been carrying what some boyfriend did. They've been carrying what some girlfriend did. They've been carrying things, and God says, lay all thy care before me, for I care for you. They've been carrying them. They've been carrying these them. And that's why I love this. Because anybody that loves the Bible says that you are a new creature. New creature. Somebody say new creature. New creature. Y'all like that said that whole thing. In Romans 8, you will understand that to another degree. New creature. Because I read in Romans 8 in a certain place, and I'm not getting ahead of myself, but I gotta say it right now. He said that the, grown, the world is groaning and moaning, waiting for the creep, the new creature. They're waiting for the new creatures. New creatures. I'm a new creature. And that's what he says. You are a new creature and all, not some, and all old things are passed away. God says, I can take what he said, I can take your mess and make your brand new. God says, I can change your situation, but you got, but, but, but you got to bow down to me. You got to stop trying to take me. Let me lead. Let me take over. You've been driving the vehicle. You've been driving your life for 45 years. You've been driving your life 60 years. You've been driving your life 20 years, 13 years. You've been driving, 
and bump what? Bump in your head, left and right. Feeling good for a few minutes in another fake relationship. Feeling good for something. Then right after, fool, right over again. Same game, same turnaround. God says, will you turn the keys over your own, will you turn the keys to your life over to somebody who can see? Will you turn the keys of your life? But no, God, just feel good. Don't let your feel good lead you to a place of eternity to that damnation. But see, he said, I want to talk to you about life through the spirit. Amen? So let's begin, begin to read. First verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 1. Reading from the New Living Translation. So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Can somebody scream? He said, there is no condemnation to those what? Who belong to Christ Jesus. So guess what? If you hear a voice trying to condemn you, if you're hearing a voice in your head saying that you are no good, you will never, you'll never overcome this. If you hear a voice trying to condemn you, maybe you need to check who you belong to. Because God will never be trying to condemn you. Do you know what I've done in my life? Do you know the things I've done? God knows, God knows everything you've done. And yet, his approach to you is not to condemn you. Why would you condemn a person already condemned? How many of you know it's our decisions that have condemned us? So God didn't come to condemn us. He came to. He came to. The Bible says to him who does not believe has condemned himself. When you don't believe in Jesus Christ, when you don't believe in the Lord of God, when you don't believe in truth, you have condemned yourself. Let me tell you something. If somebody tried to tell me not to go down a certain road because they done been down that road and they're telling me that road is hell, that road is going to destroy you, that road is going to... Guess what? I, if I ignore what they're saying, if I ignore the words they are speaking, if the woman down that road didn't destroy me, I destroyed myself because I didn't heed to a word that told me not to go down that road. Yeah. So the Bible says that when you reject the truth, you condemn yourself. So that means truth will never lead you down a road to condemn you. So everybody who ever felt condemned, that's because you believed a lie. You believe the lie. God never created you to be looked upon as dirt. It's, and he never created you to be looked upon as degrading and, and weak and sorry. You are created in the image. I'm going to show you in Romans 8. I got to show you this. See, when you don't know who you were created to be, you'll be able to call you who you think they, who they think you are. So, when men use you, you'll think, well, I ain't nothing but a show. I ain't nothing but a call. You'll begin to believe what people say about you when you don't know what God created you for. And some of us, your problem, your struggle is in your mind, your problem in your mind is you're believing what people said about you and not what God said about you. Amen. You go around talking about you're no good. You are not your mistakes. You are God's correction. Amen. You are God's correction. Because truth, that's what truth wants to do. Keep reading. So it says there is no, and I want y'all to understand this. Because we, we like, people like to quote in scripture. He said, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. If you are not in Christ Jesus, then condemnation is there for you. Amen? Amen. But look, look at us, but you can come out. Say, so I, I say, I'm not, look, put your hand on, put your hand on yourself, say, I'm not going to condemn myself no more. Just pat yourself on the head, say, I'm not going to condemn myself no more. There are people, they spend, when they open up their mouth, they spend half of their mouth talking about what they can't do. They talk about all the mistakes they made. They talk about, oh, come on, get up, get out of it. I can't get you. Yeah, no, you can't, but Jesus can. So there is no condemnation to those who are led by, I mean, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Keep reading. Verse 2. And because you belong to him. Because you belong to who? Him, Christ Jesus. Because you belong to who? Christ Jesus. 
See, depending on who you belong to determines your condemnation or not. If you belong to the world, you belong to Satan, every opportunity he gives you gonna let you know that you are condemned. The Bible says Satan is an accuser of the brother. He's always accusing you of mistakes that you have made and things that you have done wrong. And then he used people who you may have, that you may have had experiences with in life that will try to convince you that you can never be changed. That your life can never be greater. Go ahead. And because you belong to him, mm -hmm. the power of the life-giving spirit. Oh, wait, the power what? Of the life-giving spirit. So there's a life-giving spirit. There is a life-giving spirit. How many of you know that? Wait, anybody love God? I said, I love how the word keeps interacting with God. Watch it. He says, there's a life-giving spirit. There is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus who belong to Christ. Why? Because there is a life-giving spirit. Some of y'all got to get this. In Genesis, the Bible said, he said, he told Cain, if thy sin, thou shalt surely what? Die. So sin brings you to a place of what? Death. Death, right? But watch this. When Adam was created and he was formed into the dust, when he was formed out of the dust, the Bible says that God into his nostrils and made him a living soul. So it must be something about, now the ways of sin is death. And when sin came into the picture, it separated us from life. But I'm reading in Romans 8 that those who are in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For those who belong to him, there is a life living spirit. So when I lost in sin, Jesus came back up. So everybody and how many of us in this room have sinned? So watch it. When we sinned, we were like the dust. Dead. But those who are in Christ, those who accept Christ, he says there's a life living spirit in him. There's a spirit in him that gives life. It's amazing how many people say they have Christ but still look like they did. But when Adam, when God breathed into Adam, he became a living soul. How do you encounter a living spirit and yet still be dead? I was telling somebody, I, I had a dream, it was interesting. And, and, and the dream was about vampires. It was interesting. I had a dream that was, talk, was talking about vampires. And in the dream, it was a dream about a man and a woman in the dream. And God began to show me that in the dream, that the vampires dealt with women different than they dealt with the man. The vampire with the woman, he began to seduce her, romance her, to the place where she just leaned her neck back. Romancing to her flesh caused her to lean her neck back and allow the enemy to take the life out of her. But with the man, I thought it was funny with the man because with the man, the man was kind of like afraid a little bit, but he was like, he started trying to bargain with the vampire. And what's funny, the vampire turned into a full-fledged bat and it was hanging upside down when he dealt with the man. And he was in there, and the, and, the, and the man was sitting there talking to the vampire. He was like, you know, he was trying to bargain with the, with the vampire, saying to him, you know, what, what, if you could do it like this. And the vampire agreed to the man. He says, the way he get the man is to make the man think that he's the one in control. Because the vampire had the man thinking that he could be in control. But he said, and, and, he, and when, he, when the man began to ask the vampire, um, is it okay? The vampire shook his head and said yes, like he agreed with the man. And as soon as the man was ready, he cut his throat. And I said, God, what is this? 
He said one of the tricks of the enemy, of Satan, is because Satan is like a vampire. He likes to dwell in the darkness and he likes to suck the life out of people. With women, he appealed to your romance. He appealed to your, he appeals to the thing that you, that you, you want to be romanced. He appealed, and then after a while, you just let him suck the life out of you. With men, he appealed to your control. He'll make you feel like you control just to kill you. Make, and you know what he did with the man? He really hated the man. Let me tell you why he really hated the man. When the man, when he thought, when the man thought he agreed with him, the man was like, he sliced his throat with his claw. And he didn't even, he didn't even suck his blood. He threw him to the best of empires to be devoured. What is God trying to say to us? See, you gotta know, you gotta know who's leading you in the spirit. You gotta know the tricks and the weapons of the enemy. Because he'll act like he's gonna give you what you want to take the life out of you. Amen? But any, is there anyone rejoicing because there was a living spirit? Yeah. That's why I said, I said, you, I said you gotta go to the New, the new Living Translation because I, I love the way they said, a living, giving spirit has freed you. Who freed a living spirit? Keep going. The power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin that leads to death. So God says, you free from the sin that leads to death. Because I've given you a, a living spirit. You don't have to be condemned no more. I, I, he said, I sent the answer. I sent what you need to free you from the punishment of your sin. Go ahead. The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. How many of you get that? The law could not save man because of the weakness of our sinful nature. Remember this. You can tell a, 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 a man's nature reveals his identity. Your nature will reveal your identity. All of us, our nature, men and women, your nature reveals your identity. When you have a lustful nature, when you have a lying nature, whatever your flesh crave, your crave, the craving of your flesh will reveal your identity. Amen? You have a sinful nature. But the law, I mean, no, but the law that came could not change your sinful nature. What does that mean? The law couldn't change the desire for the things you wanted. It's like this, it's still the same today. If you want to get some more in a hurry, you don't pay attention to that. You don't pay attention to those, those little signs on the road that say 55. When you want something bad enough, you will ignore the law to fulfill your own desire. Amen? So the law couldn't change you. It could not change you. And watch this. If the law couldn't change you, and the law revealed to you and I that we were sinners, then we were bound to be in death. Amen? We were bound to be in death. Are you with me? I want y'all to get this. We were, that's why everybody in this room, we were in death. And that's why you and I in this room, we needed somebody to make us feel like we were alive. Some people needed drugs. Some people needed alcohol. Some people needed men. Some people needed women. Some people need men. Some people need positions and status. Why? Because they are dead trying to feel alive. Because why? They haven't got the breath of <sighs> They have not encountered life yet. Go ahead. So God did what the law could not do. Oh, I love it. So God did. Everybody say, thank God. Thank God. So God did what the law couldn't do. As a matter of fact, not only did the law couldn't do it, the law showed you and I that we were sinners. How many of you know that the law showed you that you're a lawbreaker? When the police pull you over because you ran a red light, he's not arguing with you about being a lawbreaker. He's, what he's about to do is give you a ticket. Why? He already got you. That's why I do not go to Miami Gardens and try to fight there. Because what they're going to do is they're going to show you a video of you breaking the law. And you're going to sit there and look like this. And they're going to say, now we're going to charge you money, but not only that, we're going to charge you more money because you knew, because you, knew you were guilty. Amen? What am I trying to say to you? Do not think that you're going to go before God and try to get in, and try to get into heaven of your own might and power. Oh, y'all, you know Don't think that you will be able to go to the doors of the kingdom of God 
and, 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 and try to get into heaven off your mighty power. Don't you try to earn your way into heaven and try to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to use my wisdom because you're not going to make it. Because what God's going to do is he's going to show you a video. And he's going to show you a video of your life. Now some of us say, well, I'm not as bad as this person. I didn't do this. Well, I didn't get pregnant. Or I didn't do this. I didn't lie. The Bible says the wages of sin are death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So guess what? How many people are sin? So including me. So that means everybody in this room deserves Somebody said, but thank God for his grace and mercy. Yeah. See, sometimes it's hard to forgive other people because you see yourself because of how you see yourself. You always see yourself as the victim. But I found out that it's easy, I, I learned it's easy to forgive other people. Why? Because I ain't the victim. I done done dirt too. I done, I done, I done, is, is there anybody in this room that needed to be forgiven? If you ever needed to be forgiven, then you ought to always forgive. Amen. If you ever needed, if you ever wanted somebody to say they were sorry to you, then you should always find yourself saying you're sorry to somebody else. Amen. Don't, don't play that little one-side victim thing. Well, they did me wrong, they did me dirty. Like, well, did you sin against God? Okay. Matter of fact, you would have never been in that relationship if you had never sinned against God in the first place. So stop playing righteous. Because the truth is, you got mercy. Um, they begin to be like, I'm crazy. I'm a, okay, I'm going to go back up. I'm going to go back up here. Okay. Uh, uh, I know this is going to be one of those sermons that you're going to be like, but you're going to grab this in your spirit. You're going to grab this in your spirit. Keep on reading. He sent his own son. In Come, on. A, Come on. Come <laughs> on. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies that we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sin's control over us by giving us his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He sent his son in the body that we have, the sinful body that we have in the flesh, and made his son a sacrifice for you and I. I'm like, what kind of craziness is that? Because watch this. If the way of sin is death and the law is just, then the law can't be overturned. God's word is always right. So that means somebody had to pay the price. But he sent his son in the flesh like it, in sinful flesh to be a sacrifice. To condemn sin in the flesh. He sent his son to condemn the nature of sin in the flesh. So everybody in the flesh, his son came to condemn the sin that's in your flesh. Because before he came, you were being led by the sin in your flesh. Are we getting this? Keep going. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us. How many know? This is how he said it. He did this so that the just requirements of the law, that means what the law required was just. The wages of sin is death. So nobody in this room can play a righteous chord. Nobody in this room can act like they were righteous people because the law was just. And since all of us in this room broke the law, meaning that we have all sinned, the Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, then therefore we all deserve death because the wages of sin is death, but Jesus. Says, says, but Jesus, not your husband, not the president of the United States, not your wife. They, 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 they might try to make you still feel guilty, but somebody said, 
by Jesus. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. But Jesus. See, all the rest of those religions, all, all those religions, I'm not going to say rest because Jesus is a relationship. All those you got to do all these things to be made right. You got to pray seven times a day. You got to do hell, baby, and do all this stuff. But Jesus said, I came to pay the price. All you got to do is accept the gift I'm giving to you. What kind of love is that? To accept a gift given to you and you know you did the crime. See, the, the Bible says that the law was just in what it was seeking. So nobody can get mad at God. If, the, if, God did, if, if God came right now and destroyed the whole world, how are you going to get mad? How are you going to say he's not there? God, he ain't right. He's so evil. What you mean he ain't right? You broke the law. We don't got, y'all know we don't got crazy, right? We don't got so crazy as you want to, you want to break, you, you, you. <laughs> You get you you do ninety you do ninety five. You run the red light and you want to get mad at the cop because he gave you a ticket. Talk about he could have he could have won. He could have won. He could have gave you a ticket. So if he gave you a ticket, say thank you, and if he don't, be grateful. But don't you dare act like you didn't deserve it. Times a week, God, I 
God, I even clean up the church. God, I, I haven't had sex in seven years, God. God, I haven't, I, I, I haven't even looked at a man in seven years, God. You owe me. And God saying, you're doing what you're supposed to do. You're not, you're not doing me a favor. You abiding by that truth. That's why you ain't had no baby in seven years. That's why you ain't had no drama in your life in seven years. That's why. Because you, now, because you abide by truth, that I, I'm proud of you, but don't think I owe you anything. Because I already gave you what I owe you. What you gave me, God? Because you was dead. You was dead. You was dead in your sins. Keep going. He did this so that the just requirement of the law will be fully satisfied for us, who no longer follow after our own sinful nature. We no longer do what? Follow after our own sinful nature. So be led by the Spirit of people follow after your sinful nature. There's only two choices. Be led by the Spirit or follow after your own sinful nature. Be led by the Spirit of God or follow after your own sinful nature. And it's, it's our sinful nature that brought for how he was identified. Can I get an amen? You, it, was when, it was my sinful nature that identified me as being ho hoish. It was your sinful nature that identified you as a thief. It was your simple nature that identified you as a cheater. It was your simple nature that identified you as a liar. It was your, and then we got the we got the audacity to get mad at people because people call you, they call you by what you do. Well, don't be calling me, I don't be calling me no liar. I just told a story. Don't be calling me no thief. I just borrowed that for a few minutes. You know what? Oh, I don't know if people ain't gonna like this, but I'm gonna say this. You know why we can't get people to change? Because we're too scared to show them the truth. We gonna try to water it down. Yes, I know. You are sleeping with three or four guys now. And you're you're having a hard time. But you're really a virtuous and beautiful. Yes. No, let me help you. You might, I know you're broken and you're wounded, but your decisions now are making you look like a song. And that's not who you are. See, don't tell me my actions are revealing something, but I got to show you that that's not the road you should be going down. Don't make sin look old. Don't make sin look pretty. Sin is not pretty. It causes Lives. Now you can say it with some tact. You know, I noticed something about you. What did you notice? That you have a real problem in telling the truth. I perceive that you are a liar, but you can get help. I ain't no liar. You just lie. You know what I'm saying? How do I know what I'm saying is true? And how do I know? One week, not for one month, 
Not for one year, not for five years, not for 10 years, not for 15 years, when God transformed you. When God took you out, when God delivered you, He don't give you no dry new testimonies. God don't give you no dry new testimonies. When God delivered you, you deliver. And you can tell when a familiar spirits come knocking on your door, like, oh, I recognize you.
Lord has given you victory in Christ Jesus. I love it. He said he blows the spirit of life. He's a Lord. See, when you have life, then God can send you to give life. See, God says the enemy has been trying to deceive people. He's been trying to get your mind on things that don't matter. He's been trying to distract you. He's been trying to frustrate you. But God says, I'm, he says, but greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. My Bible says that he overcame the world. My Bible says he overcame. He was born and manifested for this purpose. To destroy. Somebody said destroy. Stop following your simple nature. Stop following that nature. 
attached to your destiny, it's attached to your flesh. It's not attached to your destiny, it's not attached to your spirit, it's attached to your flesh. That thing that's dead, you know what? Let me tell you something. I don't care how well you dress up. I don't care. You can dress up in a $600 suit, a $6,000 dress, put pearls on. If I attach a dead person to you, you're going to start stinking no matter how good you look. What 
what I'm talking about. You checked yourself, you made a mistake, you, you corrected it, not going about the business. That's the, that's the word. God ain't got time for you to be spending six and seven years, four months in a mistake. Get up. He already paid the price. Get up, repent. Say repent. repent. No, so this one say repent. Repent. That means stop doing it. Because watch this, if you don't repent, you keep doing it, then you're really, really sorry. That's true. That's true. If you keep doing the same thing over again, you're not sorry. So you really didn't repent. So it's not that God has not forgiven you. You keep getting consequences to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Amen? Amen. Are we learning something? Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Verse 28, huh? And we know that God... Say it again. And we know. Say it again. We know. Say, I know. No matter what you've done, 
I already had a plan this year. I don't care if you're 15. I don't care if you're 45. I don't care if you're 67. God says, my thoughts towards you are not evil. Don't let the devil tell you that your life is over. As long as you got breath in your body. Tell him, tell him, elder, he said, tell him, 
be a royal priesthood. He said, tell them, tell them. And God started talking about you like, God, what are you talking about? Tell them, she's a peculiar person. Tell them, tell them what? You were in the midst, you were in the midst of hell. He said, tell them, tell them you were in the midst of hell. And everything going, he said, tell them, you're the apple of my eye. It mess you up. Cause what? Who is he talking to? How is he saying these things to me? How is he saying he won't be enough? How is he saying to me you are wonderfully made? Like I just got out of bed with somebody. Like hold up. He's saying I'm wonderfully made. What is he talking about? He said I'm not searching you. God's plan for you. I want to put some things to death. That no man say that God will tempt him with anything evil. Amen. What are you saying? Well, God wanted me to go through this so I can have a testimony. No, that would be contradicting of his will. But God knew that you were going to make decisions that were going to lead you in situations that try to steal your identity. So he said, I'm going to send my son daughter, to remind them that I foreknew them, that I predestined them to be conformed to the image of my son, the firstborn among many brethren, that Jesus is who you were called to act and walk and talk like. Amen. Remind them of who they were called to be. Then we say, God, God, I was in bondage, I sinned. He said, I was because that same son paid your debt, so now you can be free. Amen. Free to be led by the Spirit of God. You're no longer a debt to your flesh. We are no longer debt to us to our flesh. You don't owe your flesh anything. See, some of us think we owe our flesh. No, you don't owe your flesh anything. Your flesh is buried. You are now a debt toward to love. For the Bible says, oh, no man anything but to love him. You are a debt toward to love. And I'm going to tell you something. When we start loving, oh, this is good. When we start loving and seeing through the spirit, guess what we're going to start seeing? We're going to start seeing what the Spirit reveals in people. What is the Spirit revealing? Yeah, I know you're on this corner, but I see a future in you. I know you're in this trip, but I see a future in you. 
I know you people with a job now, but I see a future in you. They look at you, what you mean you see a future? Yeah, I see a future in you. Why? Because now I can see through the eyes of the one who says thoughts are towards you, not evil. But to give you hope in the future. I can see. they will walk up to somebody, the dude just dug it out. Yo, man, I can see the future. You know what? I, I remember I said this to a guy. He said, yo, man. Me and Papa Barbara was inside yeah. Eckers, and I went and sat there. I said, man, I can see greatness in you. He said, yeah, man, I'm trying to do this business. Yeah, man, I can see him. See, he thought greatness came from his purpose. See, the way people preach it now, they think greatness comes from what you're trying to achieve your goal. But see, greatness, true greatness comes from you seeing yourself as the child of God in which you were designed to be since the beginning of time. Because see, that's the thing that we lack. Because many of us in this room, you are talented, and you're gifted, and you are intelligent. And many of us have many gifts in this room. But it wasn't your gift that messed up your life. It wasn't your talent. You achieved your goal. It was you. You were empty. You never answered God's purpose. You never received the purpose that would have changed you, that would have caused you to be blessed, even if you didn't have that gift. It would cause you to be blessed if you were single or not married. See, the gift is Christ in you. For Christ in you is the whole world. The gift is the manifested glory of God in you. That's why when I preach like Paul said, when I preach, I travail in birth that I may see Christ form in you. Because once Christ begins to be formed in you, there is no area in life that you will not conquer or have victory. Love will be in everything you do. Why? Because now love abides in you. You don't love because of what people do. You love because that's who you are. You don't forgive because I got this and you forgive because now forgiveness has become a part of who you are. Kindness is a part of who you are. Because now he's abiding in you and birthing himself through you. And what he just break, he just breaking loose all through you. And know it's funny when God be breaking loose and people like it. You don't look the same no more. Yeah. And some of us are so crazy that we gonna look in the mirror. Oh, I, I did trim, I did cut my hair. That's not what I'm talking about. You still got brown eyes. You, you still beautiful. There's something about you. Let me tell you what the world is. When the world be in flesh, when the world in flesh, and when a young lady or a young man be like, hmm, you done met somebody. Like, she really like, what do you mean? You have a glow over you. She like, girl. I bet I went to dinner with Jojo. See, but that's that Moses glow. What's that Moses glow? See, Moses glow was in the law. It was temporary. See, fleshly glow is temporary. Yeah, you smile. But now you're crying. Now you're angry and bitter. But see, Jesus. See, you don't have to have a veil over your face to hide that the glow is left. You can let it shine. Let that, let that light shine. It's that kind of light that can't, it's a light that cannot be put out. It cannot be put out. He said, you don't hide under the bush and you put it on the camera and everybody can see your glory. See the glory of God. And then God said, tell your testimony. Well, tell them. Let me tell you what I used to do. Now watch the look at you like, hmm? Yeah. Because you lying. Now I ain't lying. What I've been born again. Like, 
You got that glory. Yeah. Yeah, I've been spending time in the glory. I've been spending time in his presence. This ain't that kind of glory to go away. Man, I want you. Man, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I would, I would hope everybody in this room, man, go study. Like, I, I got three, four pages of all this. I'm finished, though. Go study Romans 8, I promise you. Dissecting and eating, you'll be so blessed. It's your birth certificate. It's your birth certificate. The last part of Romans, you know what I'm talking about, Pastor. That last part, he says, he talked about, he should pluck you. He said, he said, not death itself. Not life, not death. He said, I got you. I got you. See, some of us need to study Romans 8. I don't mean read. I mean get your notebook like I got my notebook. Get you, get you, get you a, a, a New Living testimony. I mean the New Living translate, translate, translate. What do you say? The King James and break it down. I promise you, you'll start smiling while you read it. Your spirit will start leaving while you read it. Like, oh my God. Because I broke it down. And I was trying to go set the spirit about just let loose. Let us down. Because it's all in there. I love that part when he said, I foreknew you. I predestined you to be conformed to the image of my son and be the first one of my many brothers. Oh, I said, watch this part. Y'all want to hear another part? Watch this part. I said, I called you. He said, not only did I call you, he said, I justified you. But don't you know what I mean when he said, just he said, I, made, I, I put you in right standing with God. He said, I, I brought you in right standing with God. Why are you sitting to listening to the devil? I brought you in right standing with God. In right standing with God. He said, I called you. I justified you. Then he said, then he said, I glorified you. Watch it. And the Bible says, we have, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But then Jesus turned around and said, I glorified you. Come on, give it up. 